What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have some breaking Detroit Lions news. Well, not really breaking anymore, but it was breaking. And it is that the Detroit Lions have hired their new general manager. That is Brad Holmes. So let's get it started. No, I got a shout out to the uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And first, before we get it started, just want to give a little clap and congratulations to Brad Holmes on being the next Detroit Lions general manager and becoming the general manager for the first time in his football career. So congratulations, Brad Holmes. I know you've been working towards this. You have stated that your dream and you wanted to become a general manager at some point. And now here you, here you are. So congratulations. I got to say that first before we start talking about him a little bit. Now, we've done some videos on Brad Holmes. So we've talked about this guy in the past. So a lot of things I'm going to say in this video are kind of reiterated because i've already said them before but i know there's a lot of people out there that really don't know about, about brad holmes that well and now that we've made the hiring you got to know about him right you got to know about brad holmes so i'm going to discuss who he is what he's done what his background looks like maybe some good maybe some bad reasons to be optimistic and then maybe some reasons to be a little cautiously optimistic about who brad holmes is all right so brad holmes signed today to a five-year deal with the detroit lions now he was the only general manager candidate that came back for a second interview he was the only guy to do that now george fan also interviewed in person but it was only one interview so he was the only guy to come back for a second interview that was brad holmes and the lions decided to hire him so they weren't waiting they told us hey they wouldn't wait if they found a guy they like they were going to make it happen because they're in competition with everybody else now i don't know if brad holmes was getting the looks from other teams but i do know that the lions didn't wait around they made this hiring the question will be who will be that next head coach and that is what i'm waiting for for me to grade this hiring because i think the head coach is going to be very vital after seeing this head coaching hire there's a lot of unknowns with brad holmes and i think the next head coaching hire is going to be a lot okay i kind of put them together right i put i put them together because they're going to work together so we'll see who that guy is but let's talk about the background of brad holmes a little bit so he started in public relations with the rams and he has worked with the rams for the last 18 years it's the only team in the NFL that he has worked with. I believe he started with the Atlanta Hawks in, in basketball, but then he went to the Rams. And I guess, you know, he wanted to be a scout. He ultimately wanted to become a general manager. So he started in public relations just to get his foot in the door. He was the guy that was running errands for everybody. Hey, go get me a coffee. Oh, that coffee's not good. I want a new one. And no, maybe not like that, but that's what he's doing. Picking up people from the airport. And he was seen doing his job very, very well. And what I think I said it before, the most impressive thing to me about Brad Holmes is he is that he was able to survive multiple regime changes and firings, and he was the guy to stay there. So I think that's impressive that he was never moved. He stayed there. People liked him. So, you know, he was always there, which I think is a really good thing. And that speaks to his character and also his adaptability to do his job at a high level because he was able to stay around through multiple changes with the Rams. And in 2013, he became the director of college scouting for the Rams. Now, as the director of college scouting, well, in the title, you're really focused on college players. You're really focused on the draft. So for the last eight years, the word is he has been helping run the draft boards for the Rams. And he's had a big say in a lot of big picks that they made, including Aaron Donald, who we really pushed for when they selected Aaron Donald over guys like Eric Ebron. Uh, also pushing for getting Jared Goff and not getting a guy like Carson Wentz. He's had a say in that. There's also, according to Peter Schrager, a couple of free agents that he's had a big say in. Guys like... Um, Jordan Fuller, who was very vocal. Arius Williams, who uh, he was very vocal on bringing him in as well. He was really pushing for that guy to be signed. So he's kind of reminds me a little bit of Ed Dodds in that way. You know, we talk about Ed Dodds. Like, look, this guy's never been a GM. He's had some influence on moves that they have made, and he's been known for certain things. He also has a very good reputation, and it seems like a lot of guys around the Rams side of things really like him. See, there's this clip right here. This is from the Rams general manager. We watched it on stream. I didn't know who the guy was at first, but this is from the Rams GM. We watched it on stream. So I'm going to throw this clip in here, and this is what he had to say about the Lions getting Brad Holmes. Well, just kind of what Brad Holmes' first impression was to him, all right? He discussed the first impression, him presenting himself, and uh, he said that basically this guy's special. So check it out. Look at Brad Holmes' story. Easy one. This is when I'm a Falcon and Brad's a Ram. So uh, NFS, who runs the combine, they have uh, they scout the players for the first time. So basically in the spring, a lot of teams who are part of NFS go, go down and they hear the draft board for the first time. And, and that's a tough job because no one's no one said that this player's good or bad or the star of the show. It's these, these young scouts uh, cutting their teeth for the first time, presenting the draft board to a lot of GMs and, and VPs in the audience. And uh, there was a young man, Brad Holmes, first time presenting uh, – unbelievable job at that point in time billy devaney was gm of the rams and i remember texting billy 
after hearing Brad present, said, hey, that young man's special. Okay, and how jealous are you that he gets the seventh overall pick in the draft? It moves to envy. And so that's good to hear, right? That's obviously a very good thing to hear about the guy that you just hired. A couple of notes. He's only 41 years old, which I think is important because he's on the younger side. There's a lot of GM candidates out there that are on the older side. Kevin Colbert in particular, we we're talking about him. Well, if he landed him, would he be contemplating retirement? Would he be willing to, to stay here for the long haul? Because Kevin Colbert is 62 years old. Holmes is only 41 years old. And that probably has a big reason to be why he's never been a GM before either. So he's a younger general manager. Now, that doesn't mean we really know what he's going to do because there's not a lot there because he's never been a GM before. But I can tell you based on drafts, he's not afraid to draft weapons and running backs, wide receivers, things like that. But I also think that it could mean that it's an opportunity for the Lions to keep a guy for the long haul if he does well, right? If he's successful, he has to be successful, right? You could keep your GM for a very long time because he's at that age, but it still has to work out. If it doesn't work, obviously, he won't be able to keep that job for very long. The drafts have been pretty solid, and they've been able to build a pretty consistent playoff team. Three last four years, they've been a playoff team, and that's been with Sean McVay. Now, they hired Sean McVay before that. They were kind of struggling a little bit, so they brought in Sean McVay. He didn't make the hiring because he was in the GM, but they brought in Sean McVay, and since then, they've been a pretty consistent playoff team, but when it comes to what his role has been in that, and that's drafting, is that they haven't had a first round pick in the last four years since Jared Goff they haven't had a first round pick and they still found a way to get consistent impactful players all the time that can help out that team and continue to build it because a lot of times your first round picks sometimes they can be the only guy that comes out of a draft that's impactful so for the last four years they haven't had a first round pick I think one year was just the third round pick to start and they've still found a way to get guys to be impactful and to help them and to help their team so I think that's impressive is that they haven't had that pick to use and like they said and like you said in that video clip He's a little bit of envious that Brad Holmes is now going to get a seventh pick in the draft when the Rams aren't even getting first round picks, right? They haven't had a first round pick in four years and the Lions are going to have the seventh pick with Brad Holmes. The concerns, well, it's pretty obvious, right? This guy has never been a general manager before. He's never been an assistant GM before. So there's definitely lacking some experience here, uh, but I think the character must be very good. He must present himself very well because they thought this guy was special. And you know what? He's known as a guy that's very attention detailed, very detail oriented, where he's very locked into specifics, not necessarily the basics, not the, not the broad, but he's very specifically locked in. I think that's going to be very beneficial to the Lions in the draft, especially knowing we only have five picks this year. So I think the draft is clearly going to be his strong suit. That's where he's going to be at his best. But there are a lot of questions and that comes with free agent signings, right? He's pushed for a few, but He's not the free agent guy, right? He wasn't the free agent guy. So that'll be a big question. Who are they going to hire a head coach? Are there any ties? The only tie we know is the Rams defense coordinator, and that is Staley. I just haven't interviewed him. And secondly, I don't want to hire Staley because if you do that, it's kind of the same thing that you did with Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. Now, am I, now, am I saying they're the same people and it's not going to work out? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's a very similar direction that you would be going if you hired a guy like Brad Holmes, which you've already have, who's unproven, and then you hire the defensive coordinator that he worked with. To me, that, that's not a good, that's not a good move. I, I don't like that decision. I really don't. And Brad, and the fact that he hasn't even been interviewed yet, to me, I would stay away from that. He's been fine as a DC. I would stay away from that. At least look at the guys that you've interviewed. But definitely don't hire the guy without interviewing. If you're going to hire Staley, you better interview him. Now, who will they hire a head coach? Well, first thought that came to my mind is it could be an offensive minded coach. You hired Sean McVay when he was there. He didn't hire him, but they did hire Sean McVay when he was there. He's a younger, offensive minded coach. Now, Brad Holmes, younger coach, younger GM. So I think they could pair well together getting a young guy. Barry Sanders basically said that they've been looking also at the college ranks. Is that a Pat Fitzgerald? You know, what are we looking at there? And I also think this could mean that the Lions could get someone with more experience at the head coach position, someone uh, that kind of knows more of what they're doing because – Brad Holmes, to me, is going to work really well with somebody. He's worked well with everybody in the past. They seem to really like him. But I also think it'd be a great thing to have someone that has an idea of what's going on. If you go with a guy like Staley, you're kind of going the same direction that you went with Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia, as in, hey, you hired a GM that hasn't done before that was a scout, and you hired the guy that he worked with, the DC. Definitely see them going with an offensive-minded coach here, just like the Sean McVay. And we know the first guy the Lions brought in as a finalist for the head coaching position was Arthur Smith. So it could be Arthur Smith. He is currently the uh, Tennessee Titans offense coordinator. We did a video on him yesterday if you want a full breakdown. But he could be an option for the Detroit Lions realistically. I think everything is kind of on the table right now because there's not a lot that we know about Brad Holmes. Is it something where the Lions already have someone lined up? So if they haven't interviewed him already, it's probably not likely they're going to bring him in. Also, I could definitely see them bringing in someone with head coaching experience. The Lions said it wasn't a necessary, it wasn't a must that you had to have experience, but it was something that would be a factor. And for the Detroit Lions, 
Hiring a, a general manager that doesn't have that experience, even at the assistant GM level, wanting to grab a head coach that is proven, that has that experience in his background. The one thing that we know for sure, this guy is known as a known as, as a talent evaluator. Everybody says it. He's a talent evaluating ninja, is what someone said about him, because he just knows how to find talent. So that's why the Rams GM is envious that he gets a seventh pick, because he can find so much talent, he doesn't even need, you know, to have that top draft pick. So that's the biggest thing that he's known for. Now, I'm right right on dan miller is saying here okay look at this tweet by dan miller so dan miller brings up that the lions have mike disner mike disner the cap guy the negotiations guy so even though he doesn't have that background of signing for agency and all that kind of stuff we have a guy that has the experience doing that and mike disner that can help him out but then he also mentions that experience beneath him would be very beneficial head coach that's where i think if the line i really think i would probably give this a nine to ten out of ten if the lions hired someone that had some experience. Absolutely. I would absolutely love that because I think the Perry's perfect. You got an evaluator, you got someone that knows what's going on. I think that's great. If they don't, okay, I can still give them a good grade. We'll see, but I'm right on with what Dan Miller is saying right here. I completely agree with that. And that's a very good point that, hey, he used to tell you to tell an evaluator, but you also have guys like Mike Disner who can help you with the salary cap, who can help you with negotiations because you're not used to that. You'll learn it on the job, but you don't know all that right now, but that's okay. We'll learn that. Now, some people are going to say, hey, this could be like a Mike Tomlin under the radar. He nailed the interviews. The dude must have killed the interviews. I mean, think about it. No one was brought back for a second GM interview. And this guy that was under the radar that had literally not even an experience as an assistant general manager is brought in and hired just like that and they were saying hey head coach can be first this guy must have absolutely killed the interviews and it doesn't surprise me because the gm for the rams now said that the first impressions was he was incredible at his presentation he evaluated talent he was incredible presenting it to nfl gms so what that tells me is this guy first off He's very good with probably what his plans look like, his outlook. He's very detail-oriented. You know, he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's looking for. And he probably does a great job in interviews. He's probably very good at media and press or press conferences, things like that. And I'm excited to hear from him, honestly. You know what some people are thinking? Well, we missed out on Ed Dodds. And yes, Ed Dodds could have been great. He could have absolutely been great here. He's kind of similar to the same boat. He at least had the assistant GM experience. And he's also with Seattle. And right now he's with Indianapolis. So he's done a lot of good things. We know about the certain connections, things that he's helped with. But the thing is with Ed Dodds, I don't believe Ed Dodds was, is going to leave Indianapolis, all right? Multiple years we've seen this with a guy like Ed Dodds where he's gotten a lot of attention and he hasn't left. And that was one of the biggest things in Indianapolis is that, hey, he doesn't know if he really wants to have that general manager role, if he wants to be the final say. He kind of likes what he's doing right now, working with the guy that he knew way back 25 plus years ago. All right, he likes working with Ballard with the Indianapolis Colts. So for me, he's looking for the absolute ideal situation. I don't know if he'll find that. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But this guy isn't even interviewing that many teams. He interviewed with the Panthers and he, and he withdraws himself from the interview. He interviews with Lions and that's it. So look, is he completely sold? You don't want to bring in a guy that's not completely sold on being the GM. You want a guy that wants to be there, that wants to do it. All right. A guy that has that passion and that has the, the motor to say, I'm going to make this happen or I'm going to figure out no matter how, how long it takes and whatever it takes to get there, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to become a next general manager. And that's what he did for over 18 years. Just got his foot in the door. But he ultimately knew that was his goal and he ended up getting there. So you got to give huge props for him and you got to love that he wants to be there. Right. It's not something that, oh, well, I was given it. Oh, well, I guess I'll do it. No. I want to do it. And that's great. You see Urban Meyer is going to Jacksonville. I think that's a good move for them. But I could definitely see as well. But it also wouldn't surprise me if the Lions with the defense coordinator route. I still believe Robert Sala is the favorite. I still think he's likely to get the job. And again, he's not my top candidate. I still believe he is, however, the favorite to get this job. We'll see if he gets it or not. This is with a lot of candidates, but even with Brad Holmes. I mean, look, the team didn't want to lose them, right? This is one of those guys that li they liked having in the front office. They're going to gain some picks out of it. So it's uh, good for them. Uh, but he's very well respected there. One thing I've noticed with this draft is he's not afraid to draft playmakers. You know, he wants he's going to get your running backs your receivers the exciting explosive guys on the outside your defensive ends your defense like he's not afraid to go get me some big playmakers right to go grab the talent because again he has an eye for that that's what he does best so you got to believe that's where his strong suit's going to come in a lot of questions uh but that's going to be where his strong suit so that's why i think getting him someone to help him out that you know knows maybe uh exactly what they're doing when they come in could work really well because there's a lot of inexperience here and i don't think the lions need that again i don't think that they had that they had that they've had it way they've had it way too many times gms that are available it was gonna be very difficult to find the gm with experience and also hire him i mean think about some of the top names george Patton. he was hired by denver no chance there thomas dimitriff you know those guys for the saints jeff ireland those guys didn't have experience either but the lions can't meet with them you look at okay John Schneider, he got a big deal from Seattle. Kevin Colbert, it was going to be very difficult to take Kevin Colbert out of Pittsburgh. It was going to be a long shot. It was going to be a very long shot to land a guy like Kevin Colbert. 
Uh, Thomas Dimitrov, he has those Patriot ties in his background. I don't see it happening. Rick Smith, maybe. But there isn't a lot of GM options for the Lions out there. Maybe a John Dorsey. I, you know, that's very hit. Man. That's very a controversial signing. So there's not a ton of options out there at the GM market for the Lions to go with a proven general manager. But there's way more options when it comes to the head coaching spot. I'm just curious to see who they hire because I don't think there's really many ties here. I think everything is kind of on the table. So I'm just really curious. Again, I'm not going to make my grade on how good he's going to be or, you know, how I feel about him yet until we see who that hiring is because I need to know who they're who they're pairing who they're looking to pair up and bring with him this could be something that I could see that actually happen soon maybe they already have someone paired up through an interview or this could be something that could go through the weekend they still have Todd Bulls to interview um, but I don't know I don't know what direction lines are going with this right I mean I think everything's kind of available because there's not a lot of ties here which can be a good thing at Holmes, not ever being a GM, only being the director of college scouting, the positive for him will be he's a guy that teams won't really know what to expect. He's also on the younger side, so you can see him making some big splash moves for the future. But teams won't really know what to expect, what kind of tendencies that he has. There's going to be a lot of weird things. You won't know if he's telling the truth or he's lying. You won't know what's going on this offseason with the Detroit Lions and Brad Holmes because you just don't know what to expect from him. You haven't seen him. Other than the Rams, you won't really know what to expect from what Brad Holmes may do. So I think for the Detroit Lions, that is a benefit. Uh, but I'm really curious to who this head coaching is is so i'm cautiously optimistic right now uh, because i don't want the lions to go the same route as they did last year and i'm not saying they're the same people or last time i'm not saying they're the same people but if you hire staley to me i don't think that's the right decision i don't think hiring staley and pairing with brad holmes makes a lot of sense i would not do that you just kind of did the exact same thing that you did last time i wouldn't do that if you're gonna hire someone proven okay fine but uh maybe look at the guys you've interviewed someone that you have interviewing come up with and definitely don't hire a guy that you haven't interviewed if that's staley do not do that so we'll see who they hire that's kind of what i'm waiting for but that is brad holmes all right. He's a very well-respected, detailed guy uh, that people really like. He's been able to keep his job. He's been able to be consistent. He's younger. He's going to be up and coming. He's got a fresh mind. I don't know what that means. Does that mean he wants to go full rebuild and trade everybody? Maybe, maybe not. I think a lot of that's going to have to come down to who that coach is, just like the Lions said a while ago. Let's say uh, congratulations to uh, Brad Holmes, and we'll see who this next hiring is. I'm kind of waiting for that. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about it? Give me a grade out of 10. Right now, I'm going to leave it as a question mark, and we'll see who we hire, because I'm going to pair them together. Thank you, Brad, for watching, and I'm out.